<laughs> Imagine generating a year's worth of content in just one hour. Imagine that. Sounds impossible, right? Well, today you are about to meet the man who's done exactly that for thousands of entrepreneurs, and he's going to show you how. John Mendez isn't here to talk theory. He's here with a step-by-step -step blueprint to transform your business using AI to boost content creation and give you back time. As the host of Walk to Wealth, a globally ranked podcast in the top 2.5%, John has delivered life-changing insights to listeners in over 73 countries. He's also helped 2,200 entrepreneurs master AI-driven content creation, and now it's your turn. So grab your notepads because John's strategies can be the catalyst for explosive growth in your business. Let's give a great round of applause for Mr. John. Woo! Thank you, Danielle. All righty. So thank you, Danielle, for the amazing introduction. So with that being said, we're going to connect my uh, laptop to this TV behind me, and we're going to get right into this presentation. So uh, Danielle got to see... Um, some of this presentation, but she didn't get to see the magic behind it, right? At the last presentation where she seen me, I got to teach a lot of the strategies that I'm going to be covering today, but I didn't get to go actually into ChatGPT Live, which is going to be the main difference between what I talked about last week and what I'm going to be doing here for you guys today. So uh, with that being said, my presentation is called How to Create a Year's Worth of Content in Under an Hour. And yes, this is a photo of me as an AI. Uh, this is a photo of me as a robot. I, just, I use AI to create that. So uh, a lot of people that know me or who know me from real estate know me for my hair. I had a lot of curly hair. I still do now. I used to have a lot more. Uh, but I wasn't always this way, right? When I was younger, in fact, I used to have, to, I have the buzz cut. And so that was my hairdo pretty much all elementary school and all middle school. I rocked the buzz cut nice and clean all my life. I actually didn't know I had curly hair. And so one day, one of my friends was like, yo, John, Next time you go to your barber, ask for a fade. I'm like, what's a fade? He's like, he's, this is what I got. And I'm like, okay, I'll ask for a fade. And long story short, I ended up getting a fade. It was a rainy day. I was on my way to school that morning, I remember. And um, I was on my way to school. And I remember putting my, uh, my hoodie on because my hair got wet. And I said, at this time, I didn't know that I had curly hair. Um, I always used to grow it out a little bit and then just get the buzz cut. Grow it out a little bit, get the buzz cut. And I ended up panicking because now my hair was ruined. My hair was all wet. And I remember walking into a homeroom that day and all my friends was like, okay, John, I'm digging a new look. Okay. And I was like, what, 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 what new look? And I see my hair and it was like little curls forming. And uh, from that day on, uh, that's when my hair kind of became a thing. So fast forward a little bit more, I ended up getting into real estate as an agent. I went to Family Reunion, which is a big Keller Williams conference they host every single year. And at the conference, I went in with my hair in braids, knowing that everyone was expecting this big, massive, curly fro. And then on the Sunday uh, of uh, Family Reunion, there was a networking dinner. And in there, I woke up extra early that morning, washed my hair, and had my signature shirt that said, stop and stare, just don't touch the hair. <laughs> and that's where like, my hair became solidified as my brand. Before, it was just my hair. But that's when the hair and John Mendes combined together. So there is no me without the hair. And uh, this kind of saying was just something, it was corny and catchy. And I knew it would be a conversation starter. And so what better way to network than having something that instantly grabs people's attention. Right? Fast forward, after teaching AI, um, teaching social media at first, I ended up pivoting into uh, creating this company called Stop and Stare Media. I was teaching hundreds of realtors on classes virtually. And everyone was looking at me for social media advice. I was like, all right, well, Mendez Media is taken. What's the next best thing? So I was like, all right, um, stop and stare, don't touch your hair. Stop and stare media. So now it's a double pun because anyone that knows me from back then knows it's from stop and stare, don't touch the hair. But moving forward, it's also a marketing pun because you need people to stop the scroll and stare at your content in order for your content to reach more people. So it's part pun for the hair and part pun for like marketing. And so that's how Stop and Stare Media came about. And originally, I was going to teach these social media classes for free and then offer one-on-one -on -one agency services for people who wanted me to manage their social media for them. I realized very quickly, I hated that business model. 
After my first client, I was like, yeah, this is too much work. I was already doing all my own editing, all my own content creation. So then to do that for other people, I was like, yeah, this is definitely not fun. And so I'm at this low point. I was trying to figure out what am I going to do with my life, right? I was doing real estate, pivoted from that, entering into social media, uh, pivoted from that. And so now I have this podcast, but that was more of a purpose project. I didn't really want to turn that into a business. I ended up joining this paid business mastermind. And in here, my friend Jason, now mentor, uh, was like, he had a class on ChatGPT. At the time, I was already using it for myself. But after going through it, I got inspired. I ended up teaching my own class on how to use ChatGPT. But guess what? I used ChatGPT to create the webinar. I used ChatGPT to create the invitation emails. I used ChatGPT to create the event description on Eventbrite. I used ChatGPT for pretty much everything. And at the end of the presentation, for the very first time, I sold tickets to a workshop. As I said, all my classes before that were free. I wasn't trying to turn into a business. And so within 24 hours, I sold 20 spots at 197 a spot. And so that was about 4,000 bucks, which was about three months of me working at the restaurant at the time that I no longer work at. And that's when it all clicked. That's when I realized, all right, this AI thing is going to be the next big thing. I better get on this before someone else does. At that time, none of the major media outlets were covering it. And so I was like, all right, this is my chance. Let me run with it. And so that's why I strongly believe, right, the vehicle for you guys to consistently create content in the next 12 months is artificial intelligence, right? This is the vehicle. This is going to help you, especially those of you guys who are solopreneurs who don't have a marketing team behind you. Uh, AI is going to be the key to help you create content consistently that not just puts something out on social media to say, hey, I posted today, but something that actually drives business in return. Right? Because unless you're trying to be an influencer, most of us are want to use the social media to get some sort, of, some sort of sort of ROI, some sort of client, some sort of lead from it. Right? That's the whole point of social media. So I want you guys to commit that as soon as you know that AI is the key to consistently creating content, I want you guys to go all in. Right? So let me explain first what all in looks like. So on the left here, we have uh, Christmas lights. They try to make a little decoration. Uh, I guess you could say... Uh, they made an effort, right? A for effort. Person on the left, <laughs> they went all in, right? Imagine what their light bill is like, right? They went all in. Person on the right here, they have their first pet cat. Pet cat. I have a pet cat. Cats are cool, right? I think. Uh, but the lady on the left here, she went all in, right? She's known as the cat lady. She gets, there's an article on her. She said that it gets, she gets roughly 1,000 cats a month to visit her apartment. Uh, where she lives. So like, that's what it looks like to go all in, right? We don't want you to just dabble with this AI stuff. I want you guys to really start using it because it can be a game changer in your business. So Tony Robbins talked about, if you want to take the islands, you have to burn the boats, right? So if you've been dabbling with ChatGPT before, or if you, maybe you heard about it, you heard a friend talk about it, but you never really took the time to sit down, make an account, and like, figure out how to use it, I want you guys from today on to go all in and start using AI, because this is gonna be, as I said, the catalyst to your business to help you save more time, save more energy, save more money, and still make a bigger impact, get more business, right? So that, that's the key. So now that you guys know what all in means, I want you guys to repeat after me. Can you guys do that? Can you guys repeat after me? Ready? I commit, I commit. that as soon as I know that artificial intelligence is the key, is the key. to consistently creating content I will go all in. I will go all in. All right, perfect. So the reason why we hire a videographer is so I can hold you guys for ransom. So when I come back and teach my next presentation, if you guys aren't creating content, I have this on video. And I'm going to be uploading this, all right? So you guys now all committed. Now I can share the good stuff. So a little bit about me. I mean, Danielle did a great job introducing me. So as I said, I started off as a real estate agent, pivoted into teaching social media, and seen a massive opportunity in AI. Since then, I've been speaking across the country virtually and in person. I've been on my first TV show this year. I've been doing my podcast on the side. We have over 240 episodes out now, and it's at top 2.5% globally. And my whole mission is to help enlighten and empower you guys to do this for yourself. I think a lot of agencies do a, a, a disservice because they take it off your plate, uh, but then you become reliant on them. And the moment you stop paying your monthly retainer, right, you have no social media presence, you have no online presence, you have no content being created. And so my whole goal is to teach you guys how to fish for yourselves, right? Give you guys all the tools and strategies you guys need to implement this in your business uh, without having to spend crazy amounts of money each month, without having to be tech savvy, without having to be uh, a social media guru, right? I'm here to break it all down for you guys. Right, so my goal is for those of you who are already creating content, I'm going to help make the whole process simpler. I'm going to help you guys save some a lot more time. 
And for those of you guys who currently aren't creating content, I want to help get you guys started. I want to help you guys take that first step because social media, it's, you know, everyone knows it's where you have to be nowadays. It's usually the first place people go to to look at your business, to make sure you're reputable, to make sure you're trustworthy and make sure they want to do business with you. It's usually the first, the first place people check. And so uh, the first million dollar question I want to answer is uh, what is AI, right? I don't come from a tech background. I'm a business owner just like all you guys are. And I just happened to use this very early on. And a lot of people that are teaching AI come from tech. They come from IT. They come from Silicon Valley. And so they can break down what AI is. But by the time you get past all the 30 jargon dictionary words that they use, you're probably over, like, overstressed and trying to figure out what it all even means. So in simple terms, I want you guys to think of AI like this. Um, I want you guys to think of a traditional robot first, right? This will help make sense in a second. But a robot right, usually has one pre-programmed task that it can do. For example, a microwave. The only thing it can do is heat up your food. You still have to buy the ingredients. You still have to prep the food. You still have to clean the food. You still have to make the food. The only thing a microwave can do for you is heat it up. Now, a lot of us, we have all these different softwares in our business. We have one for this, one for that, one for this. And by the end of it, we have like seven different tools that we're using. All does one specific task, and we're paying monthly for them, and then it starts to add up every single month. Right? And seven of them we don't even use. Right? So by all the softwares, it gets very com complicated because it starts to jumble up. Whereas with AI, AI is kind of like a chef. The chef can cook the food for you, can prepare the food for you, can come up with ingredients for you, can come up with recipes for you. It can change the whole meal. Let's say you ordered a pasta and you want something entirely different. This is what AI can do. It takes all those different tools that you would normally get individually and turns it into one and you can do all the same things without having to switch different softwares. That's what AI is so powerful, because instead of having to use all these different things, you can just use one tool that does everything that you were looking for. Right? That's the power of AI. And so now that we got that covered, um, I'm gonna cover uh, three big secrets over the next 35, 40 minutes or so. Right? The first secret is the race method. Right? How to never get replaced by AI even if you're not tech savvy, right? I'm gonna show you guys how to actually use ChatGPT. Uh, Danielle was talking about earlier how she tells ChatGPT to funny tone and be professional, but somewhat, uh, you know, somewhat humorous, but then also add some captions and the hashtags and all that stuff. I'm gonna teach you guys how to write prompts in ChatGPT so that you can get the best results every single time. Then I'm gonna cover uh, my number one content creation hack, how to create a year's worth of content ideas in ChatGPT Live. So this is the part you didn't actually get to see, right? I taught the strategy last presentation, but I didn't actually get to go in ChatGPT live. So for you guys, because it's a smaller, intimate room, I actually opened up ChatGPT on my computer, and you guys are gonna see me walk through step-by-step step how I actually come up with content ideas in ChatGPT so you guys can see it live, right? And then we're gonna finish off by talking about my nine-figure video script, how to tell stories that actually sell and attract more uh, clients. So as I said, we're not using social media to look cute, to be influencers, we're doing it to drive more business. So that being said, Secret number one, let me take a quick water break. Let's get right into it. Right? How many of you guys have heard any of these doomsday headlines that AI is coming for your job, that AI is going to end the world, the AI apocalypse is here? Right? We hear all these crazy headlines on the news nowadays. And um, what I want to share with you guys is that the news, are, they're fear mongering essentially so that no one knows how to use AI. They want, they want you to stay away because they know how powerful AI is. And so their job is they know negativity sells. So they're using all this negativity against us so that we don't actually start leveraging these tools. When in all actuality, right, AI is very actually simple to use. It's very easy to use. And with the right steps, anyone can use AI regardless of whether you come from tech or if you never even open up a computer. If you follow what I'm going to share in the next five minutes, you guys will also be able to use ChatGPT at a higher level than most of these people who are even teaching prompt engineering classes are, right? So um, really quick, right? I want you guys to take a look at this graph, right? This graph is called the diffusion of innovation. Now, very fancy words, but all it means is this is how people adopt new ideas into society in large, right? So when ChatGPT first came out around November of 2022, and when I first taught that ChatGPT class in January of 2023, we were around this circle, right? Here are the early adopters and innovators. Now, there's something called the early movers advantage. And the people who are early adopters and innovators, the reason they have this quote unquote advantage is because they're usually on the front lines. They're usually the one testing things out. 
They're usually the ones that always hear about that new tool, that new software, that new application, right? They're always finding the next best, greatest things. And so these people always have an advantage because they go all in before anyone else sees the opportunity, right? Then the next circle right here is the early majority. So once all the early adopters use it, right? No one dies, everything is safe. Then people are like, all right, well, they used it. It worked for them. All right, let's start to hop in a little bit. So this is where we were around uh, September-ish of last year. That's when ChatGPT really started to, you know, to go wild and all these other AI tools started to come onto the scene. There was like a new AI tool coming out every single day at one point. Um, and that's where we were around last year, September of last year, right? People started to use it. Some people heard about it. Um, but now we're at the stage we're at, the late majority, now most people know what ChatGPT is or AI of some sort. And most people have used AI, whether they realize it or not, in their personal lives or in their business, right? And just to show some stats, uh, nowadays, ChatGPT has uh, reached over almost 200 million users active as of right now. And it's getting roughly 1.9 billion what it would be, monthly visits. So we're getting to the point where ChatGPT alone is becoming a household name, let alone all the other AI tools. And uh, quick show of hands, how many people here have used Siri before? How many of us have an Alexa? How many of us use Waze, right, or any type of GPS app, right? We've been using AI a lot longer than most of us realize, long before ChatGPT came out, long before this whole AI hype train came out. Uh, it's just only now becoming front and center. AI has been out for actually quite a, a long time now, since almost the 50s, the 60s, AI has been out. It just The only problem was you have to be in computers, you have to be in tech to take, this, uh, take advantage of this software. Now with ChatGPT, it kind of democratized everything, so anyone with internet access could start using AI and not even have to create a, an account anymore. And so my biggest fear for you guys is this last circle right here. Right? This last circle, uh, this is what we call the laggards. The laggards are the people with the flip phones. They're the people with the 1990 Honda Civic. They're still pushing 300,000 miles. They're still going with it, and they're not going to stop. Right? These are the people, for whatever reason, they just don't want to change. They don't want to get with the times because it used to work. It still works, and so they don't want to ever change. And so my goal for all of you guys is by the end of this that you guys implement at least one of the things I cover so that you don't end up in this last group over here. Because um, there was a uh, ex-Nokia CEO back in, I believe, in 2016. He gave a, a speech right before he got bought out by Microsoft. And uh, he quoted, he said, um, we didn't do anything wrong, and yet we still lost. And so a lot of people end up losing in business, not because they mess up, not because they do anything wrong, but because they just don't keep up with the times. That's what I said, that's my big fear for you guys, that you guys end up here. So hopefully you guys implement what we're gonna cover today. Um, and let's get past that. Let's get into the next big million dollar question. We're talking about ChatGPT. Anyone here of the word uh, prompt? Anyone knows what a prompt is? So prompt, a lot of people have fancy definitions for it. Essentially what a prompt is, is it's like ordering at a restaurant. So when at a restaurant, right, you say, hey, I want a shrimp alfredo, it tells the chef exactly what to make. The chef cooks a shrimp alfredo. Your prompt, essentially your order into ChatGPT so that ChatGPT knows what to make. And the better you get at writing prompts, the more specific your prompt is, the better results ChatGPT will generate. For example, if I said I just want a shrimp alfredo versus I want a shrimp alfredo um, with extra chicken as well and extra parmesan and extra alfredo sauce, whatever, the chef will make it accordingly. A lot of people use very generic prompts and hence why they get very generic results with ChatGPT and end up not wanting to use it. So the better you are at writing prompts, the better you will be at using ChatGPT and the better it will be for your business. And so I follow a four-step method, right, called the race method, right? Role, action, contact, expectation. And when you follow this method, you'll be able to write pretty much perfect prompts for ChatGPT, no matter what the subject that you need help on. Excuse me. So step number one, right? Write this down, the role, right? One day I was using ChatGPT, again, when it first came out, and I, I was being a little creative, and I was like, all right, um, well, imagine you are a social media marketer. Uh, what kind of ideas can you help me come up with for content? And then ChatGPT said, okay, I'm a social media marketer. And then proceeded to give me ideas as such. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And I started thinking some more. I was like, all right, what if I could take this a little step further? And there's this old guy that I follow. His name is Dan Kennedy, uh, old school direct response marketing guy. 
And I was like, well, um, ChatGPT acted as a social media marketer. What if I said, imagine you were Dan Kennedy? Now come up with some content ideas. And just like that, all the marketing principles and philosophies that Dan Kennedy teaches, ChatGPT starts to embed that in all of its responses. So now, instead of me having to pay Dan Kennedy $100,000 for one-on-one -on -one coaching, I pretty much got him for free just because I knew how to prompt in ChatGPT. And so when you're using ChatGPT, a lot of people don't know, you could give it a role so that it acts as that specific person or acts as that specific role. And so if you have a favorite person, let's say a consultant, right, or whatever. Um, we talked earlier about Tony Robbins. I could say, imagine you were Tony Robbins. And boom, just like that, whatever ChatGPT has trained on, chat, uh, on Tony Robbins, it could start giving me advice as if it were him. And so when you give ChatGPT a role, it helps specify um, the way it generates responses. For example, if you ask someone who's never played basketball a day in their life, how can I start getting into basketball versus asking Michael Jordan, it could be very different advice. And so when you give ChatGPT a role, it helps it start to generate a lot better responses. So that's step number one. Always give ChatGPT a role, right? Step number two is what is the action, right? What is it that you actually want ChatGPT to do? I don't have any fancy schmancy tricks for this one. Just be clear, be specific. If you want ChatGPT to generate uh, an email for you, if you want Ch ChatGPT to generate a listing description, if you want it to generate uh, 10 content ideas, if you want it to generate a video script, just be straightforward. What is the action that you actually want ChatGPT to do? No fancy tricks here, right? So we have role, we have action so far. The next step, context. So I always say that ChatGPT is trained on a trillion data points, but it's not trained on you. So a lot of people start using ChatGPT and expect it to know all about our business, expect it to know all about who we are and who we help and how we help them. And forget that, we have to train it. It's not trained on us. So when you give ChatGPT context, it helps it to personalize its responses. Instead of it giving general res results, it will give you more personalized results. And all you have to do is let's say you have five minutes, um, sit down, there's a setting in ChatGPT called Customize Instructions. And I'll show you a little bit later and in there, you could train ChatGPT on yourself once, and then every time you use ChatGPT from that point on, it will remember your name, it will remember your business, it will remember your target audience, it will remember all these different stuff. And now ChatGPT also has a memory feature on top of that. So the more you use ChatGPT, the more it remembers about you, and the more personalized responses it can give you. So always give ChatGPT context as again. It's trained on a trillion data points, but it's not trained on you. So the more info you can give it, the better response it can create for you. One second. So we got role, action, context, and the last and final step, expectation. Quick show of hands. Uh, how many people have gotten in an argument via text? <laughs> I have gotten in an argument via text. <laughs> so you guys know how easy it is for words to get lost in translation. And so just because AI is AI and it's supposed to be super smart or whatever, doesn't mean that AI understands everything that you're saying in the way you want it to be interpreted, right? So give ChatGPT expectations. So let's say you wanted to write an email, right? Make it funny, make it professional, make it 120 words or less, whatever it may be. But tell ChatGPT how you want something to be done. All right, let's say you say, write me 10 content ideas. An expectation would be like, make sure that these ideas are applicable to, if you work with first-time home buyers, to first-time home buyers or something like that. Right? Make sure these content ideas are innovative and novel, right? whatever it may be. Uh, one of the things I always do when I write in ChatGPT is I type at the very end of my prompt, do you understand, question mark, if so, please provide an example. Now, it sounds pretty dumb to ask ChatGPT if it understands, but the reason you want to do this is because ChatGPT sometimes has a bad habit of called a, a hallucination. It's when ChatGPT generates a bunch of random stuff that you didn't ask for. If you use ChatGPT enough, you'll know that every now and then it'll kind of go a little haywire. And so when you ask it, do you understand, now instead of having ChatGPT generate a whole bunch of nonsense that you didn't ask for, you stop it at the source, and then from there you can tweak it. If it gets it correct the first time, say, hey, continue. And if it doesn't, you can adjust it so that ChatGPT can generate exactly what you're looking for from that point on. A lot of people spend tons of time trying to edit, revise all the stuff that ChatGPT generates. It's a big waste of time. So if you say, do you understand up front and correct that example, well then every time after that, it's just gonna follow. And so now you're saving a lot more time, a lot more energy, because you're not sitting there revising and rereading everything that it generates. All right, so that's the four steps so far. Role, action, context, expectation. 
And as I said, I've been using ChatGPT myself since around December of 2022 when it first came out. I've been pretty much teaching it and using it nonstop. I spent countless hours trying to figure out like what's the best prompt writing framework, what's the best thing I can use. And there's a ton out there, but I feel like there's no better one that's simpler and easier to understand, right? It's role, action, context, expectation. If you follow those four step frameworks, you can use, as I said, ChatGPT for anything. And the beauty of it is it works for everybody, right? It works for realtors, it works for lenders, it works for business owners. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, if you follow this method, you're gonna you create perfect ChatGPT prompts. So that's secret number one, the race method, right? Now, to get into secret number two, my number one content creation hack. This is where we start getting into like the good stuff because I'm gonna open up ChatGPT and I'll answer your question if you still got it, if I haven't answered it yet. Um, a lot of people, they see influencers online and they see how easy it looks to create content. They see how fun it looks to create content. They see all these people recording their, these trendy videos, getting hundreds of thousands of views, and we automatically assume that, hey, they're doing it, it looks fun, it looks easy, I don't wanna get into it. And then we get into it, and then we look like this. We're stressed, we're like, oh my goodness, I don't like how I look, this, this, this lighting is awful, the camera doesn't like me, right? you're trying to figure out what words to say, you're tripping over your words, you can't figure out what you wanna talk about for that day, and then on top of that, once you do record, then you, you know, open up another can of worms because then you have to edit it. You've got to get the captions on screen. You've got to make sure the captions are the right color and the B-roll and the jump cut. And let's say you use filler words. And there's so much that comes to content creation that we don't see when we look at all these influencers that once we try to do it, it just screws us over. We get tired, we get stressed, we get you know, confused, and then we don't want to create any content at all. And that's why a lot of people end up not using social media because it can be challenging to figure out where do I even start? Is it Instagram? Is it YouTube? Is it TikTok? Like, what's the best for my business? And then you got to figure out, okay, what does that algorithm work and all these other things and hashtags? And as I said, it gets very confusing. And so I used to spend a lot of time creating content, right? A lot of time trying to figure out, you know, what would be, what would work, what trends are coming up, what trends are usually on TikTok, the trends start and then they transfer over to the other platform. So I was trying to get ahead of the trends. I was waste so much time creating content that I was generating tons of views. And I realized that there are two main paths to creating content. There's a, the path of the influencer and there's the path of the business owner, right? And the path of the influencer, people are creating content pretty much for virality. And the way they get money is through brand partnerships, advertisements, uh, collaborations, and things of that nature, right? Whereas a business owner, the reason we're creating content is because at the end of the day, we want some sort of conversion metric. Right? We want a booked appointment, we want a lead, we want someone to opt into our newsletter, we want someone to opt into our, ma our lead magnet. We want some sort of conversion metric. And so the way we have to create the content is a lot different. So now with AI, there's a new way and a better way. So quick show of hands, how many of you guys want me to open up ChatGPT right now and start walking through and show you guys some magic? All right, let's see. Let's see, let me get out of this presentation. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see, so I'm gonna go to ChatGPT. I'm gonna work some magic right now. <laughs> we should cue some elevator music while I do this. <laughs> cue elevator music. Alrighty, let's see what this loads. There we go. Gonna click here. Gonna go back to ChatGPT. Now I need one volunteer. Who's gonna be my lucky victim today? Anyone, any victims, any takers. There we go, right here. No, you looked at me. You looked at me. You are my victim. So give me three to five topics that you wanna talk about. Make one or two of them personal to you. Okay. Three to five, it could be about your business, yeah. Okay. Okay. And this is something that I really want to do, start posting. Okay. Thinking about maybe one of the challenges I help a client overcome, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of get that whole thing out. And so let's say um, building confidence is one. Okay. Can you do the second one of, you know, clarity and um, goal setting? And how about third one, time management? Okay, clarity and goal setting. You said time management, right? Mm -hmm. Time management slash productivity. 
All right. And so who is your ideal client avatar? Who's your target audience? Who, what type of person are you trying to reach out and help? High-achieving um, individuals who are looking to elevate to their next level. They kind of get stuck in their own way. <laughs> All right. What is the goal of your content? Is this going to be like your main lead gen strategy? Are you looking to educate people? Are you looking to get leads? Are you looking to just build a big following so you use as credibility? What's your goal with your content? All of it. <laughs> Let's pick one. It's a lead magnet. Um, I want to educate. I want to inspire. And I do want them to follow me and reach out to me to either take on one of my programs or buy one of my subscribe to my newsletter, that kind of stuff. And how would you describe your natural speech? Like, what's your natural style? Are you someone that's more direct and to the point? Are you funny? Are you, spon you know, uh, spunky? Like, well, how would someone describe you? Certainly not funny, right? <laughs> 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 Ask my kids, they'll tell you I'm not funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I like to be inspiring and yet, like, soft but firm, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I don't want to be like, you got to do this. Like, I'm more of like yeah. empathetic, meet them where they are, kind of really help them understand that I know what they experience. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And now, let's see. And you said you're an executive coach, right? Mm -hmm. Executive coach. All right. Specializing in, what, do, what would you say you specialize in? What's the, the ideal like outcome that comes from working with you if I were one of your clients? Gosh, um, more clarity, more productivity, um, more peace, joy, abundance, and more vision, and more fulfilling life. Amazing, amazing. Feel. All right, now before we get the magic, so I want to recap what we've done really quickly, right? I asked you for some topics, put that into ChatGPT, ask you about your audience, your goal, your writing style, right? And then the prompt underneath it says, using the information above, create a one month uh, marketing content <laughs> calendar for an executive coach specializing in helping people become more peaceful, fulfilled, gain clarity, and joy, right? Targeting my ideal client avatar, break it down week by week, and list out the specific days and times to post each video based on the best time to post for that day, create one video per week, and include content ideas in between the post. So remember in secret number one, I talk about the race method, role, action, context, expectation. Context right here, we told you about your business, who you're looking to help, what the audience is, what, you know, um, what topics you wanna to talk about, right? Then we actually didn't give it a role right here, but well, we could if we wanted to. But, uh, and then I wrote the prompt, what's the action? Create a one month marketing co uh, plan for an executive coach, right? And then expectation, right? Break it down week by week, list out the specific days and time to post each video based on the, base, uh, based on the best time to post for each day, right? So we gave it, uh, I'm gonna just add a role just to say we did it. Act as a social media manager and boom now we have the full race right there so i'm just going to hit enter and let chat gpt work its magic so it's going to take a couple seconds and start uploading boom here's a one month marketing plan tenured uh for your executive coach client focusing on the topics of building confidence gaining clarity and goal setting yeah 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 by all means i can send it to you afterwards as well too this is what happens when you volunteer, guys. You get free content plans. So how to set clear to So the whole thing is like what I'm learning like through marketing is like you really need to hook them in. You need to be able to like mm -hmm. touch their pain points, right? Okay. So really quick while you mentioned that, right? Um, this wasn't part of the presentation, but since you mentioned, I'll bring it up. Right. A lot of times when we you know look at marketing people and we see marketing consultants, the first thing they do is when they're talking about your target audience. They start talking about demographics. What's their age? What's their gender? What's their income? What's their marital status? Right? Where are they living? How much income are they making? Right? They start talking about all these different I said, demographics, which are important to know. Um, but one thing you really want to know to make your marketing effective is what are the psychographics? What's going on in their head? What makes them tick? 
because when you understand their pain points, right, you understand what drives them. And so there's four things that you should know when it comes to understanding your target audience at a deep level so that you can make content that actually converts. And the first thing is what problems are they currently facing? Right? Let's say you're working with a first time home buyer, they may not have money saved, they may have student loans, they may have uh, a low income job, so they may not have a lot of money coming in. Right? The next thing you wanna know, what questions do they currently have? What questions are they looking up? Right? If you go and ask someone that's a first time home buyer, this might be, how do I start the home buying process? Do I work, how do I find a realtor? Do I work with, you know, do I go to an open house and just show up by myself or do I have to reach out to someone first, right? The third thing, what roadblocks are currently getting in their way? If there were no roadblocks, they would just get it done themselves. But there's something in there that's stopping them and if you know what the roadblocks is, then you know how to help them, right? For a first time home buyer, I said it may be, let's say that they don't know about the home buying process. It may be they don't have enough money saved, right, for the down payment. Right? What's currently getting in their way? It may be that they don't have enough flexibility with their job to go even look at houses. Right? They may be too busy. What roadblocks are currently stopping them? Because if there were none, they would have already done it. And so there's something in there that they need your help with. And then the final thing is, what's their ideal result? Right? What do they actually want? Again, for that first time home buyer, it could be to buy a house. But the real smart market of what they do is to take it a step further. Why do they want to buy that house? Maybe it's to start their family. Maybe they come from a family of generational renters and they, no one in their family has ever owned a home before. So home ownership is something proud, something that has nothing to do with buying a home. It's more about the pride that comes from being a homeowner. Right? Maybe they're immigrants and they didn't even think that buying a home was possible right? because they say they maybe didn't have a tax ID. And so there's certain things that they want. Right? Maybe it's buying a home. It could be making that first 100K. It could be gaining clarity in my, my business. But like, take it a layer further, why do they want that goal to begin with? Right? And so the deeper you get an understanding as you're on, of your audience and what makes them tick, the better you'll be able to make content that converts. And so a lot of people, as I said, demographics aren't per important, but the psychographics is where the real money is at. That's where you can start making copies, start making content, start making newsletter that drive conversions, that drive opt-ins, that drive booked appointments, that drive more and sales, and et cetera. Um, I said that was had nothing to do with the presentation today, but you brought up a great point, and I wanted to touch on it. I mean, it's true. Like, I mean, they say that like it's really you want to touch like their heart. What are they feeling? Like, mm -hmm. put yourself in their shoes, and then what are the questions that were they the problems that what might be holding them back? Yeah. And that's true for anything. Like, what do you for a hometown? Well, the fun part is you can ask GP, you can ask Chat GPT those exact questions, and it'll give you some suggestions. Yeah, hundred percent. That that's the easy way to get started. Another way to get started. Um, figuring out your target audience and how to best help them is, and this is actually the most time consuming way, but there's nothing, nothing better than going straight to the source, right? Going straight to your actual people that you wanna help and figuring out, hey, what are you struggling with? So I'll give you guys five questions that I always ask when I'm trying to figure out what people are struggling with and I'm working on a new project, a new, let's say a new course, a new workshop, whatever. Uh, the first question is, what are your current struggles with fill in the blank. What are your current struggles with AI, with ChatGPT, right? with leveraging social media for your business? What are your biggest struggles? Next question is what are your biggest fears around fill in the blank? So one of the things I ask is what are your biggest fears around social media? And one thing that I never expected to hear was, hey John, I, I don't like how I look on camera, right? It's, I, I don't look like how I used to back in high school. And I was like, huh. So what did I do? I created a video showing people how to create faceless videos, right? Why? Because some people don't like how they look. How did I know how to make that video? Because I asked someone and they said, I don't like how I look. So I created a video to solve that problem for them. Right? Now you don't need to show your face in your videos ever again, right? So what figures do you have around fill in the blank? Um, what are you currently doing to fill in the blank? So what are you currently doing to create social media content? How are you currently using AI in your business? How are you currently uh, you know, trying to find or you manage your work-life balance, right? What are you currently doing, right? You wanna figure out where they currently are. Because if you don't know where they are, you don't know what advice to give them, right? You don't know how you can help them. Figure out where they currently are. Um, the fourth question is, in an ideal world, what does it look like when you finally fill in the blank? In an ideal world, what does it look like when you finally buy that first home? 
finally get fulfillment and peace and clarity in your life. Finally, right, uh, finally move out of where you're currently living. Right? Finally sell your home. Finally, you know, get your first six-figure uh, year, right? Finally break free from your job and to go all in your business, whatever it may be, right? Uh, this helps illustrate what their ideal result is that I mentioned earlier, right? Figure out where they want to go. So the third question figures out where they are. The fourth question figures out where they want to go. And then the fifth question is if you could wave a magic wand, um, what would you need to get you from where you are to want to be, where you want to be? This question is amazing because you're pretty much asking them, like, how can I help you, pretty much? And they're telling you exactly what they would want. If I could wave a wand, I would want someone to give me $30,000 for a down payment. Okay, well, I actually know a down payment assistance program that can get you $30,000 for your down payment, right? So they're literally telling you how to help them. And so you can just go back and say, hey, well, there actually is something about that. And if it's that thing is what you offer, boom, you have yourself a new client, right? So those are the five questions. If you want to figure out, like, where your audience is currently struggling. I said, this is the most time consuming way, but there's no better information that you can get, no higher quality information you can get than going directly to the source. Because then it's a two for one. You can ask people where they're currently on. So that's one touch, right? And then let's say you create a video on it, you create a service for it, or create a product for it. Then you could circle back and say, hey, uh, Daniel, remember you were telling me that you were struggling with AI and like, you didn't know how to use ChatGPT to come up with content ideas? Uh, well, I was thinking, I actually came up with a prompt for that. So now I could double back call Danielle again and say, hey, you remember you told me you were struggling with a couple months ago? Um, I actually created something for that here. Boom. I have your answer. And now it not only shows that you have the, you know, the solution to the problem, but it also shows that you remembered. And you cared. And you cared. So it's like, it's most time consuming, it's the least convenient, but there's no better way to get quality information when it comes to figuring out your target audience. Right? Um, so that's, I said, a little bit of a tangent, but very good stuff that you guys uh, I, I think you guys will all find valuable. Uh, back to this. Now that we have this content calendar, a lot of people like to be organized um, and have things put together nice and neat. So what we're going to do is I'm going to copy this next prompt right here. And I'm going to go back to ChatGPT, my good friend. And then from there, I'm going to hit enter. So what does this say? It says format as a table with four columns. Column one is the date, column two, the social media post for the day, column three, a fun, engaging ha uh, caption with hashtags, and column four is the optimal time to post. So now you can see in real time, Monday, right, video, three mindset shifts to instantly boost your confidence, right? Here's your caption, optimal time to post, 12 p.m. Is that something that's actually accurate? Who knows, who cares, post it anyways, right? <laughs> Don't obsess over the, 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 the tiny details, right? Um, but yeah, just like that, you can start coming up with content ideas. And the best part is, so we're currently in October, so let's say now create this calendar for November 2024 and hit enter. And now just like that, it'll do that same exact thing for November, right? Monday, November 1st, Tuesday, November 5th, Wednesday, November 6th. All new content. All new content. And so now, you can go in here at any time you want, anytime you're struggling with what to post for today, you can go on here and now you have ideas. It's, uh, so in inertia, right, it's a lot harder to get something in motion. Once an object is in motion, it stays in motion. A lot of times people don't create content because they don't know what to talk about. They don't know where to start. They don't know what they should post today. But now, you're now your problem is, which one should I post today? But that's a lot easier of a problem to have than what on earth do I talk about? And so now you have options to choose from. And with this, these options come in seconds. So now you're going to have more options you probably know what to do with. But the best part is, you can always just tell ChatGPT to pick for you. And it does. Tuesday, I know I'm posting an inspirational quote. You don't have to put any thought into it anymore. And then as you start getting more freedom, as you start getting more creative, and you start getting uh, used to this a lot more, that's going to open up more doors for you to actually put more time into your content. But when you're first getting started, you need something just to put up, right? Exactly. And then you can start, you know, open up ideas like, hey, you know, what? I actually want to do something to create. I want to create, you know, I want to do a vlog, right? Boom. Stuff you know, normally would never even think about trying to take on. But because this is already out the way, it opens up doors for you to be more creative now. So that's essentially how you create your content in the calendar. Now, if I were to keep on going, I would just say do December then do January, 
February, March, and so on and so forth. And if I wanted, let's say you're someone that likes holiday posts, or you could say, hey, for December, sprinkle in some holiday posts. Let's do that. Now create December, uh, December's calendar, and sprinkle in some holiday posts. Right, and people celebrate different holidays around Christmas time, around December. So depending on what holidays you celebrate, you could just tell ChatGPT, hey, include Hanukkah, or include, include Kwanzaa, include Christmas, include whatever it may be. And ChatGPT will gladly do it all for you. And so now, right, confidence is the best gift you can give yourself this holiday season. Five daily affirmations for unshakable confidence. Boom. Right, another one, right? Holiday post, what are you most grateful for this holiday season? Right? Gratitude is a big thing, especially when it comes to feeling fulfilled, feeling joy, feeling clarity, right? Being grateful for the things you already have. So things like this, now you can start incorporating seasonal holidays. You start incorporating things that are important to do, uh, too. Let's say for January, you're doing a new year, new me challenge, right? Boom. You can say, hey, create a content calendar for January 2025. I'm doing a new year, new me challenge, helping, uh, you're centered around helping people find clarity in their life and actually stick with their goals so they don't, they don't get new year burnout, right? and start telling ChatGPT about your new workshop that you got going on, and then all of its content will be centered around that. So this is how you create your content calendar, right? This is how you get started. So how many of you guys will actually want this prompt? All righty, perfect. So I'm going to give you guys all this prompt just for being here. And then you can go brag and tell all the other chamber members that you guys had me first so that you guys have all the AI secrets. <laughs> Let me share my screen again. Presenter view, nope, this one. I'm going to have to skip a little bit. Boom. Hopefully this works. Last time it didn't work. Yeah. Let's see. Danielle, let's see if we got it right this time. Let's see. You have your phone in your car? No worries. Write it out. on. I'll type it out for you. If you go to stopandstare.media forward slash AI, you can get that. All right. Here's what we're going to do. Everyone... Go to stop and stare dot media forward slash AI with a capital AI. Stop and stare. Dot media. Stop and stare dot media forward slash capital AI. And make sure that AI is capital. And then boom, that has the exact prompt that I use. So if you guys want to use that prompt that I used, just use now to create the content calendar, um, it's supposed to take you to this page. And for whatever reason, the QR code never works. It gets the picture, but it doesn't get the, the full thing. Part. I got to fix that. That's the second time it happened. <laughs> Technical. Stop and stare dot media forward slash. And it's a capital AI. This is so fun. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, and there's a bunch of other prompts in there for you guys to play around with and use as well. I want to make sure everyone got, has it before I move on. Last time I was on a time crunch. They had 30 minutes to kick me off stage. <laughs> <laughs> now I can sit down and wait for you guys to all have it before I move on. Stop and stare, I'm sorry, what I was thinking. Yeah, stop and stare dot media. media. Yeah. Forward slash, capital A, capital I. Yeah. Okay. Great. Stop and stare dot media forward slash AI. Let's see. The one is two to five hours per week with the AI won't replace the daily newsletter. Oh, that, yeah. That's just my that's my main website. Okay. If you put forward slash capital A capital I, mm -hmm. you should be there. Here, try to scan this QR code right here. Let's see if this works. Oh, whoopsies. Let's see. Does that work for you guys? Let's see if this works. 
This one should work. Danielle. I don't have enough phone battery. Everyone else, does it work? Yes. Yes. Perfect. All right. So, yeah. Once you put your email in, it'll get sent right to you. All righty. Let's get back to this presentation. All righty. Where do I go now? I have so many tabs open. I'm so sorry. All righty. Let's get back to the front, front and center where the, where the action is happening. Phones down. Um, so far, how many of you guys think this is awesome so far? Show of hands. Perfect. All right. We're, all, we're doing great. We're doing great. Well, now, when you log in, because I've never been into ChatGPT, when you log in, how do you get to that place when you're putting all those criteria mm -hmm. that you were inserting? When you go on to, so the main ChatGPT website, great question. It's called openai.com. Um, I, I do, yeah. But it's not necessary. It's just copy and paste the prompt, and you, you can do exactly what I did. Um, yeah, so don't worry about the complexity of it all, right? You go on ChatGPT, um, you don't even need to create a free account. You can go right off the website and enter in the prompt and start using it from there. Um, but yeah, great question. OpenAI.com is the official ChatGPT website. If you just type in ChatGPT into Google, you'll see like 70 spinoffs. Um, so just go to OpenAI.com. You can access the official ChatGPT. All right, with that being said, secret number three, how to tell video scripts or I mean, stories that uh, attract more buyers, sellers, and investors or more clients in general. So um, a little quick uh, flashback before I got into real estate, I worked at K Jewelers. I was in jewelry sales. And so one day my D, uh, district manager, he was on the job and he was talking about a bunch of different things. We were having a conversation and somewhere along the way he mentioned, John, you know, you have the gift of gab. Now my first thought was, what is this old guy talking about, gift of gab? What does that even mean? Uh, and after he explained it to me, I realized like, oh, well, I guess talking a lot isn't a bad thing necessarily. And he's like, no, John, you have the gift of gab. Like, you can talk. Like, you know how to have a conversation. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, normally when people say you talk a lot, it's a, not a compliment, right? And so uh, <laughs> I was like, all right, that's, that's nice to know. I have the gift of gab. And uh, fast forward a little bit, once I got into entrepreneurship and business and real estate, uh, and I started taking public speaking more seriously, I started paying for workshops and started to grow as a public speaker, I realized there was a, there was a big difference between just having the gift of gab and being able to deliver a message that educates, that inspires, that impacts people, that actually change people's lives, that change people's business. And I realized very quickly, like, if I want to become a good speaker, I need to do a whole lot more than just talking a lot. I could talk your head off if you let me. But, like, how can I get, a, you know, get to a point where I can speak in front of people and actually help them to take action, help them to make a change, help them to learn something that they could actually use? And um, I started investing more and more into public speaking. I found this book called Expert Secrets. Now, I highly, re I can't recommend this book enough. This is probably one of the best books. Like, there's a lot of people that read books. I study this book because this book is amazing. And so in this book, he talked about the storytelling framework. There's this guy named Russell Brunson. And in the book, this guy Russell, he talked about how he started his, uh, you know, his journey as a speaker and a presenter and as a business owner. And how when he first started telling stories, he would bomb. He would go on stage, he would try to sell his products and services, and no one would buy and he would go on stage and no one would buy. He would go on stage and no one would buy. And eventually he started learning about the hero's journey. And he started finding out by, uh, what's his name, Joseph Campbell, I believe his name is. And he started learning about the hero's journey and how to tell stories. And so if you know anything about Hollywood, all the big films, they all follow this hero's journey framework. Now this guy Russell, what he did, he realized that the hero's journey was great for storytelling, but it wasn't great for selling. So he would tell stories and then he wouldn't get as many people to buy as he thought he would have. And so he started to tweak and modify this storytelling framework that's been used, you know, used for thousands and thousands of years until they came up with the a quote unquote epiphany bridge framework, which is his framework that he kind of coined. But essentially this framework is just how to tell stories in a way that actually gets people to buy and to sell. And so there's five steps to this framework, or there's more, but the simplified version is that there's five steps to this framework, right? Um, not including the hook. The hook is, we can get very lost in the weeds when it comes to how to hook people in for social media, right? All I want to say about the hook is that it's how you start the video, right? Usually shorter and quicker to the point is better, regardless of whether you're doing a 30 second video or you're doing a 30 minute video, right? Just try to hook people in and let people know early on what they're going to get from this video. 
hey, here's my top three strategies to help you buy your first home. Here's, hey, hey, you're struggling with ChatGPT? Here's this top secret prompt writing framework to help you write perfect prompts every single time, right? Simple and to the point. What are people gonna get out of this video? I could probably do a whole class on this alone, um, but people overcomplicate this. You don't really need to learn how to create a hook because then you get into all the different complexities of it of a hook is more than what you say is actually the words on the screen and the, the background. There's a whole bunch of it, but all you need to know, keep it quick, keep it concise, and let people know what they're getting from the video, right? And then to get into Russell Brunson's storytelling framework, right, so there's five steps. And so this exact framework I've been using on you guys over the course of this entire presentation. So let me peel back the current a little bit and show you guys the, what I've been doing. So the first step is you want to give people the, the backstory, right? The first step in telling a great story, you got to tell people the backstory. The backstory gets people to care about you because people don't care about what you say until they know how much you care. Right? And so your backstory is to get people to like you as a person because once they like you, well, then everything else after that will fight. They'll listen to everything else you have to say. So my backstory, I've told multiple backstories. Right? To start off this presentation, I told you how I used to get the bus cut, right? how I used to have hair and I used to not have hair and then I did and it became a brand. And it was a funny story. It had nothing to do with AI, nothing to do with business at all. But I told in a way that attached you guys to me a little bit. Now you guys have seen Little John and you guys are like, oh, this guy, it's a cool guy. I showed you guys the backstory. Then with secret number one, I shared with you guys how I got into using you know, ChatGPT myself, right? And secret number two, I shared with you guys how I got into creating content, right? And secret number three, I just shared with you guys how I used to work at K Jewelers. So every time you're telling a story, you want to start off with the backstory because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so that's step number one. Step number two was the journey, right? So after I shared with you guys my backstory, right? I used to be bald back in middle school, but then what? I told you guys I got into real estate. I started teaching social media classes. And then from there, I joined a business mastermind. I taught my first class on ChatGPT and I made 4,000 bucks in 24 hours. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is the best, you know, the next best thing. I started telling you the journey I went on to gain the information that I know, right? So you gotta share, share the backstory of where you once were, but then you gotta share the journey that you went on. Right? The journey helps to pretty much helps people value the information that you're about to tell them because you tell them all the time and money that you spent trying to learn whatever it is that you learn. And now they don't have to spend any of that time or money and they can just get all the good stuff. So you got to share the journey that you went on. Right? Then from there, you have to share the new opportunity. Now the new opportunity right, is just the thing that you're talking about. So in my presentation, Right, the new opportunity was AI. So after I finished telling you guys about how I used to be bald and have the buzz cut, and then I got into real estate and then I grew my hair out and I got into ChatGPT, the new opportunity I presented for all you guys was AI. And I had you guys all say, I commit that as soon as I know that ChatGPT or AI is the key, I'll create content. I shared you guys the vision. I shared you guys how powerful AI is. I introduced AI as this next big and great thing for your business. Right, so after you go through the journey, Got to share the new opportunity. What is the thing that you want people to know that you're talking about, the big thing that you're talking about that you want to share with the world? And then from there, you give your framework. Now, your framework, this is just the steps, the strategies, the tips, the tricks, whatever it may be. Excuse me. So each secret, I told you guys a story, and that's here in my framework. So I served the first story about being bald and then getting into business with ChatGPT and AI. And then I shared you guys my three secrets. That's my framework. Then within each secret, I share the story, tell the backstory, tell the journey, and then secret number one, the race method. My framework there was role, action, context, expectation, right? And then I started secret number two. And then in secret number two, I shared another story. I showed you the journey, the new opportunity, and then I walked through how to use ChatGPT. I walked through my framework. And now secret number three, I shared you guys another story about K Jewelers. And then the journey I went on, and then my framework, I'm in the middle of telling the framework right now as we speak, right? And so when you tell this story, whether it's a 30 second reel, whether it's a five minute YouTube video, whether it's a 30 minute podcast, whether it's a one hour webinar workshop that you're doing right, in front of a bunch of business owners, you just rinse, watch, and repeat this entire framework, right? What's the hook for my presentation? How to create a year's worth of content in under an hour. How, what's the hook for this secret, right? My nine-figure video script, how to tell stories that attract more clients, right? So each story, each secret, each phase of this entire presentation, I hit you with a hook and I told you a story, right? And so step number four in the framework is framework. This fifth uh, step 
is the achievement and transformation. So I kind of alluded to this back in secret number one a little bit or, um, about, um, or not I lied, when I was talking about the psychographics a little bit about someone wanting to buy a home, but what's the deeper meaning behind that? So the achievement is the goal that people want to achieve. Let's say it's buying a home. The transformation is the, the, in, uh, the internal goal that they want to accomplish. So it's buying a home, but because they never owned a home before. It's buying a home, but so that they can start the new family. So the achievement is the external goal that they want. The transformation is the internal goal that they want, right? So the storytelling framework is you tell a backstory that gets people to love the character. In this case, we're the character. We're the business owner. We need people to love us. Tell them the journey we went on to learn what we learned, right? We give them the new opportunity. We share the framework, the steps, whatever the strategies, the tips, the tricks, the methods, right, whatever it may be. And then we share the achievement and transformation that you get once you follow those steps. So that's essentially the five-part step, the five-part framework to telling a good story, right? Backstory, journey, new opportunity, framework, and then achievement slash transformation is technically one step. But that's how you tell a story. And then the last step is call to action. So I'm going to keep this part a little simple, right? Again, with the hook, you can get very lost, very complicated, very quickly. But all you need to know here is keep people on the platform. Don't say, hey, call me for more information. Don't say, hey, book a time on my calendar. Don't say, hey, email me, right? When you, people see your content, 99.9997% of the time, no one on this planet has ever seen the video and was like, all right, I got to get off Instagram and go call this person, ever, right? <laughs> when you have a call to action, you want people to stay on the platform because if the platform sees you coming off the content, right, they're going to assume like, hey, Daniel posted a video and the, of the five people that seen it, four of them clicked off of it, her video must suck, <laughs> right? Because they don't see it as, hey, people are following your call to action. They see it as, hey, as soon as they watch your video, they left. And these platforms want people to stay on the platforms for as long as possible so that they can get more money with ads, right? Because a lot of these platforms are free to use. And so if you take people off the platform, you're going against the, what the platform is, themselves want. And so you got to play nice with the platform. So I always say it goes down in the DM, right? If you have a call to action, send them to your DM or send them to your comment section, right? Tell them to comment a keyword, right? Or comment this or click. I wouldn't even say link in bio, but worst case scenario, say click the link in bio. Whatever it is, do not tell them to get off the social media app. Uh, we can get, as I said, super complicated with this, but all you need to know is keep people on the platform. If you want to send them a link, if you want to book a time, you want to tell them to call you or send them an appointment, tell them to DM you, tell them to comment, and then reach out to them via DM, right? And then in there, send your link, send your your whatever it may be, your invoice, whatever it may be, but do it all in a DM, right? Not on your video. So that's step number three, the offer, the call to action, right? And so creating content used to be hard. Hopefully after today, not anymore, right? So that's secret number three. And so we covered today the race method, right? Role, action, context, expectation. We covered my number one content creation hack, which is the prompt I gave you guys for using ChatGPT. And I showed you guys how I can create a content calendar and then you could take that calendar and turn it into a table, right? And then I covered my nine-figure video script, right? Or Russell's nine-figure video script. I had to tell um, stories that actually attract more clients, right? Boom. That's our three secrets. So quick show of hands. If you guys all started using ChatGPT, like the way I mentioned in the beginning, right? And used the race method and created a content calendar and then started telling stories the way I shared. How many of you guys think that you too could start creating content? That's 100%. That's pretty good. I think I did a good job today. <laughs> Great. So here's what I know, right? Uh, even if we had a full day together, instead of like the, the hour that I had with you guys, right? It's impossible to give you guys all that I know. You guys, you guys are going to need more than that. And so, um, and while everything I gave you guys today is valuable, this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? I only got to walk through one of the steps. And so we had three secrets today, right? There's so much more I could give you guys if we had more time. And so, um, Inter interested in having me help you uh, create content, I'd like to invite you all to my mastermind. Um, this QR code, hopefully this one works, is uh, just to book a call with me to find out more information about my ma mastermind and how I could help you with social media. So that is all for my presentation. And if you guys remember one last thing, I'll leave you guys with this while he's scanning. After he's scanning, there we go. If I could leave you guys all with one thing for this presentation is that AI won't replace you. Someone using AI will. Thank you, guys.
Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I'd like to open up for any questions, uh, even if they're super specific. And While you're doing that, may I get another water, please, quickly? Uh, Sorry. My question was um, more of, well, since you don't log in, how does it remind you as a business and log in all the questions and remember what you're about to ask without regurgitating all the information yeah. over it? Great question. Just create a free account. Yeah, if you want ChatGPT to remember you know, like what you input, just create a free account. Yes, you can use it without having to create an account. If you go directly on their website, you can just type into the ChatGPT and it'll reduce, produce something. But if you know you're going to start using it a little bit more actively, create a free account. Yeah, great question. I'm thinking my clown too. <laughs> Yeah, great question. So uh, I get a lot that asked a lot of times, like, what is the best, like, large language model, the best AI tool for use for your business? For me, I personally use ChatGPT mainly because it was the first one to come on the scene, and I've used it since then, and it's been kind of paving the way. It's been leading the way since. And so there are a lot of like, the what biggest competitor might be Claude, I think, yeah. uh, which is the closest one I'd say. But for the most part, unless you're really going to start getting into programming or high level AI usage and API keys and all that fancy schmancy stuff, just stick with the one that you know. So I started using ChatGPT, so I just stick with that one, but that's a great question. And um, you mentioned about presentation. So there's other AI tools that I cover as well. So there's AI tools I use for like, oh no, so I mean, we could talk more about that. I'll share, I'll share it now, but um, a lot of, so uh, here are some of the top AI tools I use in my business personally, right? One of them is called Video, Video AI. That tool helps take long form content and turn it into shorts. Another tool I use is Riverside. Riverside is a recording software that I use. It's kind of like a Zoom alternative. It helps record higher quality content. So if you're someone that does a lot of meetings, it'll be perfect for you. Another one I use, uh, well, at least I used to use, is Descript. Descript is a great editing app. If, you don't, if you're not really high tech or fancy with editing, uh, it has a lot of cool tools that you can use and it's pretty streamlined um, to learn how to use. And a final tool I used to use before I hired my videographer and my editor is, um, is Captions for Talking Video. Now, Captions for Talking Video. Oh, yeah. Now that's an app that's only available on iPhone, mm -hmm. but there, that's probably the only app that I ever paid for that was actually worth its weight in gold. Like that app is amazing. And so that app helps to do a lot of the AI editing for you. So it'll put the captions on screen, it'll take out the jump, you know, the filler words, it'll add jump cuts. I think it got to the point where now It'll even add B-roll. It has a fancy feature. Let's say you're reading off of a teleprompter or a script. And it'll take your eyes and make it look like if you're looking on camera. So there's a bunch of cool tools in there as well. So What's it called? Caption? Captions for talking video. For talking video? That's yeah. Available. On iPhone, unfortunately. So you download yeah. the app. So if you're doing a video, you can have your script up. But it'll, fill, it'll help you with kind of editing and making it look like. Yeah. Okay. So if you don't want to hire a videographer or an editor of some sort, you can hire a tool and get a tool like that and it'll do a lot of the work for you. Okay. Yeah. And I think it's, it used to, when I first started using it, it was like eight bucks a month. I started using it when it first came out. And then I stopped once I hired my editor. And then uh, I think they upped the price now, but even still it's more than worth it. Yeah. yeah. Or video AI is a good alternative as well. Video so if you if you do something on like the computer, if you record like longer form content, let's say five to 10 minute videos, or even if you do like podcast style conversations where you like, you just get with someone and have a conversation and record that. Um, that, you use video AI, it'll take the video and turn it into clips for you and put the captions on screen and all that stuff. Right, then and you post that stuff, right? Exactly. You post the podcast on your website, but if you want to take certain clips of it, then you can use that, that mm -hmm. video AI. And it'll kind of, yeah. post, not quite a month, but maybe, maybe a week's worth of content, depending on. No, you could probably get a month. Like, I'm going to take this, and that's why I have the videographer. I'm going to take this and upload it into Video AI or tell my editor to do it. And this right here, I've spoken for what, like an hour 10 ish? This is like easily 25 clips right here. Just me standing in front of you guys today. About, but yeah. Turn, it's all about repurposing content. Uh, one of the biggest things I learned, right? We all hear about people living paycheck to paycheck. And when people hear paycheck to paycheck, usually with finances. And I, I don't know what made me come to this realization, but. I realize a lot of people are living paycheck to paycheck with their content creation. And so they don't have any content saved up. And so if they're not creating content every single day, then they have nothing to post. And so they're constantly in this rat race of content creation. 
And so the reason why I go so hard with leveraging AI and repurposing content is because this one hour presentation, right? Yeah, if you factor in drive time, right? It's hour here, hour back. So let's say three hours, right? But this three hours got me 25 clips. So now if I'm posting three a week, now that's what, three times, that's eight weeks of content right there that I got just for making a drive up here, presenting and driving back. And so now if I don't create another video for the next eight weeks, I'm perfectly fine. I don't have to stress, I don't have to worry, I don't have to you know, try to force myself to get up and record and get ready, like no, I can chill and be more creative and when the time comes and I have more creativity, I'm in better mood and I have higher energy, I'll record my, my video. And if I don't feel like it that day, I don't feel like it. Why force myself to create content if I have the next three months of content worth, uh, you know, scheduled out? I, I was talking to one of my other friends, I was saying on an IG Live once, and um, this is also why having like podcast conversations are great, because you say a lot of smart stuff when you talk to other people. I feel like when you just stare in the camera and talk by yourself, like you, you still have smart things to say, but I feel like you just come up with smarter stuff when you're talking to people. And I was like, if you know what's getting posted today, you're not scheduled out far enough in advance. Now you shouldn't know what's getting posted. If you're focused on business and social media just a tool to help you get generate more business, right, your main priority is whatever your business operations are day to day. Not going on recording content, creating videos, and being on social media. It's like my content, I never know what's getting posted right, anymore. And it's been like that for the past almost a year now. Like I have content scheduled out consistently, three to six videos each week going on six different platforms. And so it's like, I don't know what's getting posted, where it's getting posted, or when I even scheduled it out. I just know things are getting posted. So whether I show up today or don't, I'm okay. So yeah, great question. Great question. What else we got? Besides the phone ringing. <laughs> Do you post across, I'm sorry, I'll keep asking. Please, please, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you post across all, like, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram? Yeah, my big focus right now is on YouTube. Reason being is because YouTube is a search engine, right? YouTube is owned by the number one uh, search engine, Google. Mm -hmm. Google alone has more monthly visits than the, nine next web the next nine websites combined. Wow. YouTube is ranked number two. So between YouTube and Google alone, they have more monthly visits than like the top 15 or 20 websites, right? So it's like, and with YouTube, unlike IG, like IG, it's not really a search engine. Like you see trendy content, it's all algorithm based. And so you're banking your success of your content on the algorithm, on the platform, which is entirely out of your control. But with YouTube, people go on YouTube usually to get a problem solved. And so for example, how to fix a flat tire, whether it's 1995, 2005, 2025, someone's gonna have a flat tire and not know how to fix it. So you start creating evergreen content and on YouTube it's searchable. So as long as you can get yours to pop up first, someone is going to always see it. Or even if they don't click on it, your thumbnail is gonna be there, right? So they're, 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 over a while, they're like, oh, I've been seeing her videos often. Like, oh, I've been seeing his videos quite often. I have never watched them, but they keep getting recommended. Maybe I'll click. Versus where a lot of these other platforms, you're at the mercy of the algorithm. And it's a guessing game, right? And so with YouTube, it's a search game. And so you have a lot more opportunity to actually get your content in front of people who are looking to solve the exact problem that you help solve. Mm -hmm. to be the most searched video for fixing a flat tire. That's when you start getting into SEO okay. and keyword stuff. And that is a very complicated question. <laughs> but what I can tell you, and this is what I do, there's a tool called uh, vidIQ. And vidIQ, it helps you search up keywords and it also helps you look at what's currently ranking. So what I'll do, let's say, how to fix a flat tire. Well, first thing I'll do is I'll look up on YouTube how to fix a flat tire, see what pops up. Then I go to vidIQ, and then in the keyword search, I'll type in how to fix a flat tire. And so, now this might get a little complicated. There's like short keywords and like the long tail keywords. So a short tail keyword is like flat tire. And so if you just type in flat tire, a lot of people are probably already ranking for that. But let's say how to fix a flat tire on your 2007 Honda Accord. Well, that's a lot more specific. And so instead of trying to compete, be a, 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 you know, a small fish, big, big ocean, you could be a shark in a little pond, right? And so you find more specific long tail keywords and make videos on that. That would be the strategy. So instead of saying how to fix a flat tire, it says how to fix my it, 2018 BMW 
a your M4 or something like that, flat tire. And so now there's probably a lot less video or how to fix my computer versus how to fix my 2019 MacBook Air. Mm. Right? They're both the same exact thing. One's a little bit more specific. So instead of trying to compete with the big dogs, compete with the smaller. Are they looking specific? Because then you, you, you won't show up because they're looking generic. Well, do you look specific for specific, uh, specific stuff? We all do. No, maybe I, I guess to your point, like if with my car, if I was yeah. for something, I would look for, what, what's the... So, that's, so, so let me do, reel it back a little bit. Yeah. Remember we started talking about psychographics? What problems are they facing? Right? What questions are they currently asking, look, looking for the answer to? What roadblocks are currently getting in the way? The more you understand that, the easier this content game becomes because you're not guessing anymore. Right. You understand your audience and that'll tell you everything you need to make. So let's say your audience drives a Lexus you're not going to be making Honda videos, right? Entirely different car, entirely different model, right? If your competition drives a motorcycle, you're not even going to be making car videos, right? Or your target audience makes, drives a motorcycle. Let's say your target audience lives in New York City. They probably don't even have a car to begin with. So if you're make, f talking about how to fix a flat tire, well, they're on, they're on subway number seven right now trying to get to Grand Central, right? So it's like the more you understand your target audience, the less everything else becomes a guessing game. Yeah, great question, great question. So what's, what was the VideoIQ, is that just another app? Like VidIQ. VidIQ? Yeah, that's a, uh, a free tool. It's like a, it helps you with YouTube, essentially for like SEO and ranking and stuff like that. So a little bit more complicated. Taken, seeing what's taken, seeing what's popular. Yeah, seeing what's popular, helping you come up with ideas, helping you search key, keywords. Yeah, it's a website. VidIQ. VidIQ, yeah. There's a free option. There's a paid alternative as well. Um, so I would say start, don't overcomplicate the process. If you haven't posted your first video yet, I wouldn't even open up VidIQ. <laughs> Just focus on getting the reps out first, right? It's like cold calling, right? Your first call is gonna suck regardless of no matter how many times you read the script, right? No matter how many times you spent, you know, how many classes you spent on sales training, right? Your first video is gonna suck. Your first call is gonna suck. Uh, repetition is the best way to get better. So but, instead of... Um, like, like, I'm a business owner, right? I yeah. The basement company. Forward facing my face versus hiring someone on Fiverr or hiring you or somebody else that's speak on behalf of a boring something yeah. like basements, more lively, prettier, you know what I mean, whatever. Would it be advisable to do that, or would the business owner themselves be forward-facing? I, I mean, you're in a service-based business, so like a lot of that is, who you know, just connections and people hire you for you. For example, versus like a, let's say a sweater. It doesn't matter if my face is on it, Kevin Hart's face is on it, The Rock Johnson's face is on it, like, if the sweater is good material, I'm probably just going to buy a sweater. It's comfy, right? Whereas we're a basement company. Um, a lot of times, like, you're buying the person. We're a real estate agent. You're buying the person. A lot of these service-based businesses, you're buying the person, right? And so for something like that, I mean, if you have a marketing person in-house or you have another employee who's a little bit more spontaneous uh, or more, you know, energetic and lively on camera, have them create the content, right? They're part of your team. They're part of your company. You can do that. Um, but I said, I would, especially with a service-based business, I would, like educate a lot of people because a lot of people don't know about that stuff right especially nowadays like my generation like a lot of them aren't as handy as you know what they used to be so it's like a lot of stuff you can just create educational content on and some of the times it doesn't need to be you know fancy or schmancy or pretty or anything it's just like all right what's the value that i'm getting here and so it's like is it educate like educate uh education first or is it entertainment first if it's for entertainment well, then you have to create content, a whole other approach, right? But if it's for education, well, then the fancy stuff doesn't really matter as much, right? People, as long as the information is good and valuable, and good and valuable is determined by the viewer, not by what you think is valuable. That's the tricky part, right? Because a lot of times we'll create something and then no one cares about it. And it's like, oh, but I'm trying to tell them, like, this is good stuff right here. They need to know that it's a basement, this, da, 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 right? This could whole mess up their whole foundation. But it's like, well, they're not passionate about basement, so how can you give that same information in a way that makes it make sense? For example, with AI, I try to teach this. No, no one here has any interest in programming computers, right? Nope. Neither do I. <laughs> right, right. So it's like, how do I get this stuff? And this is super techie stuff, right? And put it into a presentation that actually gets people engaged for over an hour, right? And so figuring out how to do that is, hey, depending on what your audience is and what the topic is. It could be a little tricky, but then that's where the stories come in. It's like me working at K Jewelers has literally nothing to do with AI, 
right? But you find a way to make this, all this stuff like kind of mesh and mold together so that you can keep people's attention and keep people engaged and interactive. So I would say my, my, me having a buzz cut in eighth grade has literally nothing to do with AI. But I found a way to bring that into the story. So it's like, oh, right? And that way you can get something that people normally wouldn't care much about on its own and find, make it more interesting. But yeah, great question, great question, yeah. Long story short, to answer it simpler, I would focus on creating the content yourself. Yeah, and don't for, you worry about trying to make it pretty or fancy, right? Just what is valuable content? What is valuable information? Let's say you saved the client $1,500, right? Because you got, you know, they checked their basement and they, you found a potential leak. Well, there's probably other people who own a home that may have a leak that don't know about it. Spread awareness about it. Tell everybody, hey, I just saved so-and-so $1,500 because he had a leak and he didn't know that there was a wet spot in his basement and then educate them on, you know, what you did and how you helped them. But yeah, great question. Great questions. Besides using AI to create content, what other ways can you use it to enhance your day-to-day -day life and your businesses? Uh, so I'll show you guys one thing. So um, right now, uh, one thing I'm working on, um, I have an annual AI workshop that I do. So I did one last year. I'm doing one this year in Stanford. It might be a bit of a drive for you guys, especially around this time, but it's gonna be the 23rd from um, 6 to 8 p.m. Um, October 23rd in Stanford. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but, uh, but I wanna, what I did this year is, right, instead of high, getting sponsors, I got uh, people speaking, right? I have a, couple, I have a speaker coming in. Uh, and this is kind of like the prelude to what my big idea. So for next year, I want to do a big conference, like a big 200 plus person conference in Stanford about AI and marketing. So one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm talking with ChatGPT and I'm like trying to come up with names for the conference. I'm trying to come up with uh, different ticketing options and pricing options. I'm trying to come up with um, different ways to provide more value and things of that nature. And I'm using ChatGPT right now to help me plan my conference for 2025. It started off as a thought. I went to ChatGPT and I was like, hey, here's my idea. I want to do a big event, right? There's nothing in the area locally that's around AI specifically. And marketing is something that I genuinely love, right? I use a lot of this AI stuff for marketing specifically. So it's like, how do I mix the best of both worlds and have like the best entrepreneurs, the best business owners, the best professionals in the tri-state come together and then also have the best speakers on AI and marketing come and for one day just like deliver a bunch of value. And so a lot of the stuff I'm planning for the comps right now, I'm just brainstorming with ChatGPT. Like, hey, here's what I'm thinking and going back and forth. And ChatGPT has a voice feature on your phone too. So like you can talk into ChatGPT and it's like, hey, ChatGPT, here's what I'm thinking. And now you can start brain dumping the ChatGPT and you could use that same race method, right? Instead of typing it in, you can hop on the phone with ChatGPT and say, hey, ChatGPT, imagine you are a event planner, right? I want you to help me come up with a conference idea for 2025 around AI and marketing. And so you can do things like that as well. So great question. I don't know if you guys noticed too, but um, every time you ask a question, I try to repeat the question you ask. So that's my hook. Because a lot of this is just gonna get clipped into content. So whenever you guys ask me a question, I just repeat the question and then answer it. Because if I just were to answer the question, no one know what on earth I'm talking about. And so if someone were to scroll and see my video and hear me talking about a conference, well, they don't know why I'm talking about a conference. They don't care. So I always repeat the question, right? I said, hey, here's a way that I use ChatGPT in my personal life. Here's a way you can use ChatGPT outside of a uh, content creation, right? And then I answer all of it, right? My hook wasn't complicated. I'm just repeating the question. Then I provide the answer to the question. And then if I wanted to like actually make it to the video, I'd say, and if you want more AI tips, make sure to comment AI and I'll give you my free AI starter kit if I wanted to. But for essentially, all the questions you guys are asking me are just all clips, right? All about repurposing, how you can get more bang for your buck. But you've been disciplined to repeat the question. Yeah, do I do it now without thinking. But I wanted to share that with you guys so you guys could see. Yeah, it's, it's like media, I, with podcasting you learn, right? It's kind of like, if you're in media or PR or anything like that, usually, they'll train you for that. I haven't had professional media or PR training. I just, from podcasting, I just kind of got so used to answering the question. But yeah. It's also good when you're in a big room with a big audience to repeat the question because a lot of times not everyone mm -hmm. hears a question unless there's someone walking around with a mic. 100%. And, and most times the person walking around with a mic walks around slow. 
So then they have to walk through the whole aisle to pass the mic over. And like by the time, by the time the person already asked the question, by the time they get to it. So yeah, so no, 100%. Yeah, that too. So a couple of, um, I, you know, I love the outline that you gave for uh, Chat GPT, and I've been using it now for probably a little over a year to create content. And what I'm trying to do is figure out new ways to use it. So every time I come up with something, it's like, let me go use Chat, Chat GPT. So I'm going to have a booth at a huge conference in November. Yeah. It's for the biggest conference that I've been to in my space. Yeah. And I wanted my booth to stand out. So I asked ChatGPT, told them what kind of conference it was, followed really what you were saying on mm -hmm. it with the race, and it came up with amazing ideas. So yeah. it was, and every day you come up with more ideas on how to use it. Yeah, no, 100%. I told uh, you, Danielle, earlier, is ChatGPT is capped by your creativity. So it's like, if you, the more stuff you can come up with, the more ways you'll find out how to use ChatGPT, because there's really infinite ways you can use it. And once you learn how to, like the race method or some sort of prompt framework, it's just plug and play. You want it for an exhibitor booth or it's the same thing I did for my conference or anything in between, right? You can come up with anything, just how creative are you? I came up with more ideas just listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right, any last minute questions? I have a quick question. So Go for the it. The paid version of ChatGBT, is it, um, I have just the free version, but mm. like, I heard that you can kind of import Canva into it and it can yeah. kind of, is that true? And like develop your marketing materials for you or is that not true? Yeah, so great question. So when it comes to upgrading ChatGPT and if it's work for your business, uh, there's a lot of extra features that ChatGPT Plus has. One of them are custom GPTs and one of the custom GPTs, which is like a mini chatbot in ChatGPT, is powered by Canva. And so it can help you generate images and stuff like that and connect directly to your Canva account. Also on the paid plan, uh, DAL-E is already embedded into ChatGPT. So if you want to DAL-E, it's an image generator. And so when you type into ChatGPT, hey, generate an image of blah, 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 it'll create the image of whatever you want it to. So they create an image of a open house flyer, it'll create the image for the open house flyer or whatever it may be. Now, how I use ChatGPT's image creating feature in my business is a lot of times when I'm creating presentations for Canva or presentations for PowerPoint, I use ChatGPT to generate an image. And as you guys noticed from this presentation, there's not much information on my slides. It's just a bunch of photos for like an hour straight. Just, you're just getting hammered with for photos, photos, photos. A lot of these photos are AI generated, right? And so I go on ChatGPT and I just say, hey, this slide I want to talk about, you know, how to find your target audience. And so I just have ChatGPT generate a photo uh, representing that, and then I'll slap that onto this presentation. But yeah, great question. Yeah, I, I actually want to upgrade because I want to do that because I'm in the mortgage business. Yeah. And I want to create more appealing kind of flyers. And yeah. One thing that ChatGPT sucks with, ChatGPT is, um, if you want to use ChatGPT to create images, uh, one quick disclaimer is that ChatGPT kind of sucks when it comes to text. So it could generate something for you, but if you want something where it's a whole bunch of text, it doesn't really, sometimes it misspells it, sometimes it just starts typing gibberish. And so if you want to create like a flyer with like a bunch of words and stuff like that, sometimes it gets a little wonky. So um, just a quick disclaimer. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, great question. What else we got? Going once, twice, three times. Sold. Uh, th <laughs> thank you guys for having me. Thank you guys. I hope you guys find this valuable. And so, yeah, that's my presentation for today. Hopefully, you guys got tons of value, more value than you guys know what to do with. Danielle's been promoting this earlier.